Okay, so this is lesson three for chapter two, rational numbers, and this uh, lesson is a bit of a review. So before we move on to the next section, which is problem solving with rational numbers, I want us to do a bit of review of order of operations using integers. So making sure you really sound when you're adding and subtracting integers, as well as remembering your sign rules for multiplying and dividing integers, and then following bed math, so following that order of operations when you look at integer problems. So these examples are going to involve decimals and they're going to involve integers. It's going to be a bit of a review. So I would encourage you to try these questions on your own and just use this review video to check your solutions. And for those of you that really struggle with this concept still, uh, work through these examples and listen to the video and replay it if you need to. And we can always use tomorrow in class to go through some additional examples for those of you that need it. Otherwise, uh, this should be a brief review for you before you look at lesson four, which is problem solving. All right, so these first four examples are asking you to estimate and calculate the value. When you're estimating, adding and subtracting decimals, I want you to look and see uh, which number is larger. So we're not looking at a larger value. The positive will always be your larger value, but I want you to look at the numbers themselves and see which is larger. If it helps to think of it as money, I want you to think of the values in terms of money. And so 265 and 381, negative 381 is a larger number, not necessarily value. So we should have negatives left over. So I want you looking at that and at least uh, estimating are you going to have positives or negatives left over and how many. So I would like you to try these first four examples, remembering your sign rules, remembering to either use a number line for adding and subtracting or remembering how to type them in your calculator and uh, try these four examples and then double check your solutions with the video. So pause the video and then check your solutions. Okay, so the first example we get left with a negative 1.16 when we put that in our calculator and then when we look at the second example, negative 5.96 is the same as plus 6.83, remember those two, these two negative signs together become an addition. And so when we look at these two values, the positive value is the greater digit, so we should have positives left over. And we do, we have positive 0.87 left over. Examples C and D are asking you to use your sign rules. So think about your sign rules when you are multiplying or dividing these. For 0.45 times negative 1.2, we get a negative 0.54 and we've multiplied it by 1 meaning we're multiplied it by itself and then 1 and a little bit more so we should have 0 0.5 plus a little bit more and 0 0.54 is a little bit more just in the negative direction when we look at D we have two negatives being divided so our answer should be positive and we're dividing it into quarters or 0 0.25 so we're dividing it into smaller pieces so we should end up actually with a larger value and when I go 2.3 divided by 0 0.25, we get 9.2. Okay, the next two examples ask you to take into account order of operations while you're solving. So thinking about following the order uh, according to bed math, not following left to right. So in the first example, we have addition and multiplication. The multiplication is going to happen first. So everything I don't use, I write down below. Negative times a negative gives me a positive, 2.99. When we add these together, we get 6.39. When we look at the second example, we have two sets of brackets back to back, and each bracket has subtraction going on. And so I want you to keep in mind that when two things are touching without an operation in between, it actually means they're being multiplied. And so we have two brackets being multiplied with subtraction in between. We need to solve the brackets first. So 4.51 take away 5.32, I'm taking away more than I have, so I end up with negative 0.81. In the second bracket, we have 5.17 take away 6.57, again I'm taking away more than I have, so I'm going to be left with a negative 1.4. Now we have two brackets being multiplied, two negative integers being multiplied, we're going to end up with a positive 1.134. The last example asks you to find some errors in the student's work. The best way to do this is to write the question out 
for yourself. So this is the original question. So write it out again beside it to the right and try solving this question on your own first and then go back to see where the errors are made. So I would like you to take a minute to write this question out and solve it, pause the video and double check your answer afterwards. Okay, so you've solved this question on your own, we're just going to double check it. So we've got negative 2.2 plus 3.4 times the bracket and inside the bracket we have 5.6 minus negative 3.2. So the first thing we're going to solve is inside the bracket. So negative 2.2 plus 3.4 times the bracket carries down, we haven't used it yet, and 5.6 minus negative 3.2 is actually 5.6 plus 3.2, and we end up with 8.8. .8. Now we have addition and multiplication, so the multiplication step is going to go next. Negative 2.2 carries down, plus 3.4 times 8.8 .8 gives us 29.92. And now we need to add, as so of 29.92, and we have a negative 2.2, we should have a large positive answer. We get positive 27.72 left over. So quite a big difference between that and the 3.52 that the student got. So when we go back to the student's work and see where their mistakes are, hopefully you noticed that they went left to right. So they saw this addition, and they did this addition first. But this is out of order. Just because, it come, just because it comes first, as we look left to right, doesn't mean it's what we solve first. So this was out of order, so that was a mistake. They made another mistake on this line. They took the 5.6 minus negative 3.2, and they just ended up dropping one of those negatives for some reason, instead of turning them into a positive or keeping them both there. So that's two mistakes. Um, some of you might have caught this, some of you might not have, that there was another mistake. They decided to multiply these two values, which is fine, but then they should have also multiplied the 1.2 by the negative 3.2 using the distributive property. However, they didn't. They only multiplied it by one value. The other thing that they could have done is they should have subtracted inside the bracket first, and then that would have given them uh, perhaps the correct value inside the brackets if they hadn't made all those other mistakes in the first row. So uh, when we look at the last line, 6.72 take away 3.2, technically there's no mistakes there, but those two values that they got were already wrong, so there was no way to get a correct solution from this point. Okay, so that's your last example. Um, again, I want you to remember that this was a review lesson. And so if you seem to struggle with any of these concepts, please make sure that in tomorrow's class you take a lot of time to ask questions and to go over these type of questions so that way you feel a lot more comfortable and a lot more confident with them. They're not going away, um, so let's try and make them work.